Hello there, welcome to back to Just Stuff. And today we're going to continue exactly where we left off, and that is building a Go application um, that can display market data. So, in this example, which is what we're going to build at the end of what I'm going to go through, is where we're going to be able to load this web page and we're going to see um, the historical data or, you know, for the past, the prices as it varied in, in previous days, what it closed at for the past year, at least that's what I'm doing in this application. But when I do the example, you're going to see it. So you can go back as far back as they have data. So you can go back five years and all this other stuff. But here I'm just showing past year of data for these different stock tickers. Now, before we can build this application, of course, though, we'll have to go back and see where we left off. Now, while I start up my Visual Studio Code editor, please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Okay, let's get into it. As you can see, I don't have anything in my example part um, part two directory here other than my GoMods file. So what I'm gonna do is go back and do a recursive copy of our previous example, which was six, and the last example there was example five. Um, go mod there. So let me take this out here. So delete this. All right. So what do we have? In the last example, I showed you how to just get stock information for a particular symbol. And so we pass a few symbols on the command line, we loop over them, and then we're able to print out their information. So we took all those symbols, use the list API. In the previous example I showed you, you can use get to get um, information for one stock, but if you're trying to get for a few, use the list API, it returns all that information. And we can, of course, get all these details like the average price and all this other stuff, right? Well, this is great for, for getting like a snapshot on, or maybe a summary of what a stock is. But if we really want to plot a chart, we want to get historical information, how much it closed at on each day or each month in the past, what year, two years, whatever the thing is. So we have to change things a little bit. So we need to go back and get historical information. And the way the finance package does that is by giving you a package called chart. And the chart um, package is very easy to use, just like the quote package you had quote.get or quote.list. Well, for chart, we have chart.get. So let me get rid of all of this. And I'm going to do chart.get. And then I save changes here. So I have the chart package. And so if we click here, we can see that so it accepts or expects a parameter. So we will click here for documentation. And it says, um, get returns a historical chart and requires a parameter structure as argument. So here's that parameter structure. And so parameter structure is from the chart API. We can see that here. So we know that we have to initialize a parameter and pass that in. So we might as well do that. Let's call it P is equals to um, parameters here. All right. And then we pass P here. All right. So what does get return? It returns an iterator. Oh, this is just like before. Iter colon equals that. So now we need to initialize this API. This parameter, sorry, I keep saying API. So if I click on this to get the documentation on what um, params is, it says param carries a context and chart information. Well, let's ignore the context part of this. We don't care about that. And the accessible fields, these are the accessible fields, okay? And it's the symbol. So this is what we want chart for. This is pretty easy. So this is gonna be our AAPL, Intel, Google, whatever. And then the start date, end date because we're doing a chart historical information we want to know the range the period of time that we want to get data from and then this is interval it has this type called date time that interval well actually all these other three fields are from the date time um, package so let's grab this one time and let's just go back here and so we'll say that our symbol so we have a symbol field yep and that is going to be our symbol and so let's just start out by doing an example with something like APL to see how it works before we try getting everything else and then the other fields that we have is um, start and so we're gonna put start time or start date for example and I think end was the other one yep end date and then we add interval as the other 
parameter and so this was from date time that interval I believe is what it called it here let's go take a look at this its interval is the aggregation of each chart bar and so it's a string and it, we have one minute interval two minutes interval all this other stuff and so I would say um, if we're going back uh, let's say a year um, if we do daily interval that seems like reasonable for me um, it means that we're going to get a couple hundred data points and remember that if we go back a year quite literally a year from today's date going back a year um, expect that the stock market closes on weekends so that's 52 weeks in a year times two days per weekend so you're already done 100 days 104 days right um, but we have a couple hundred data points so what i want to do is i want to say interval that let's do one day yep that seems reasonable to me all right so we still have a few things more to fill in we have to figure out what our start date is so whenever we run our program we want to calculate today as the end date and then go back one year so that's going to be our start date well fortunately go makes it very very easy for us so we can see now right which is essentially going to be our end date right because we want to end um our chart today so now is going to be time that now that's pretty straightforward or and so we can call this our end date right but this, we'll leave it as now to just kind of keep it clear in our mind that we're talking about now as in today. Now, a year before now would be, so a year ago is really now. And if we do some addition, so there are two ways you can do date ad addition in Go. You can actually add a duration, like we'll represent a year, or you can use this really nice function, which I think is super cool which is add date. The funny thing with add date is that the name is a little misleading. There's no minus date. That's because add date allows you to do negative values. So if I want to do a year from now, I do just one, zero, zero. And it means literally one year from now. But a year ago is just minus one. So that's all we need to get um, a year ago. So <laughs> that's pretty sweet. All right. But this is in goals date um, time format. What this field is expecting is a date time format value. And so if we go back here and we, well actually, uh, oh yeah, there it is, date time structure. And they have new date time structure that you can create from a time value and it returns a date time. So all we really need to do is say that our, our start date is you know, date time that new, and then we pass it um, a year ago, because that's our start date. And then our end date is date time that new, and essentially now. Does that make sense? If you find this confusing, just create the variables outside here called start and end, and then use it that way. Okay, so why is this complaining? Da, 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 da. Oh, so this one's, um, you know, a pointer to, let me close this, I clicked that by accident. So it wants a pointer instead. So we can do that, we can do that. Okay, all right. So that should take care of that for us. Now, the reason why I'm getting an error message about these other guys is because we're not using those right now. So now that we have the parameter uh, configured to go and get Apple stock, so, Apple stock um, for a year ago. Now we just have to iterate over it. So let's do closing price. And closing price is this big decimal. And so if you go to the big decimal package and you take a look at it, uh, let's see, here we go. And you can see that it allows you to create a decimal from you know a string or from an integer or a float or something like that. So one of the other things we want to do besides just calling big decimal that float is we might want to run our value before we return it because just returning a float with a bunch of decimal places is not going to be very useful to represent price. So we should run it after two decimal places first and then that's a decimal that's returned from that and then return our float and then run it after two decimal places 
and then carve float to get our full value. And of course, we know this return two value so that it's the price. And we don't care about the error. I don't care if it's exact or not. And so that's the price. Um, the date, it's going to be D that um, timestamp or something like this. And so what is this type? This is, mm, I'm betting this is like a date time thing. Oh, it's just an integer. So we'll need to convert this to a time value. Okay, so now we have the, the price and the time. So I say, well, let's print it out. And we save that. And so let's see what else is missing. Uh, oh, this is an int64 value. So we need to do int64 or four. Um, oh, wait a second. What does this expect? It expect int64. Yep. And then this time step in the int value. Okay. So we need to cast that to int64. All right. And so let's now run our code. Let's go back to the command line here. Actually, let's just right click here, run it. And if we scroll up, okay. Oh, it says that oh, this is not used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going for the moment, I'm going to say that underscore is equals to CF and underscore is equals to SYM VLS symbols. And then that should get rid of S M B S. Okay, um, I'm like all over the place with how I need that variable. All right, so let's clear the screen. Oh, I need to run this on the command. We have to go over there so we can pass some parameter. So I'm do go run this, and then I do Apple. And the reason I have to pass something is because um, we have this check that check to see if there's any parameter. Okay, but at least we see that how we have. The stock prices, historical stock prices going back, we have 252 data points and it goes back to, um, you know, 2019.05, yada, yada, at 9.30 a.m., whatever. We don't care about the time um, for the stock price, a day, a month, and then, you know, a day, something like this. And then if we go back and we clean up our screen and we run, now you can see um, this is what it looks like. All right, so sweet. We have our data points and we now know to get historical information. Let's move on to example two. All right, so in example two now, um, what we wanna do is talk about how we're gonna chart this information or at least put it on a plot, right? Like using the e-chart um, library that we were playing around with like in episode five. So if you remember, that library we, we wanted to do is render it as an HTML because it always writes an HTML file. It's just a matter of whether you write an actual HTML file or you use like a web server. And we decided to using a web server, just render it directly to the user browser. That's like the easiest way to go. So let's now try and do something like that. Okay, so let's write a web server, start it up, and maybe have it render some sample data, not the chart data we have yet, because you're going to see we're going to run into a little bit of a problem to figure that out. So here is main. And so what I like to do is I like to say, um, let's push all of this stuff into a function um, for now. I'll call it um, func foo. And I'll get back to this function later on. Um, for now, though, I want to do something like call it start web server. And what Start Web Server is gonna do is kick off a web server. And the way we create a web server in Go is pretty simple. So this pretty much um, is how we need to start a web server. Of course, we need this handler. And the handler is nothing more than a function with this signature here. Um, response writer, which is an interface and a actual concrete value, which is the HTTP request. We can get more information about the request. So we can create that function here. And again, this is very simple. We can test, test it out by doing f print f, and we can say, let's write to this writer. And we can say hello from graph handler. And so now if we go back here, um, oh, the other thing I want to do is when I do listen and serve, I want to do error, get the error return here just in case we fail to listen. All right, so we have that in place now. Okay, all right, so let me go back here and control C and then let's rerun. Oh, I'm doing um, example two now. That 
that should be still be running and so now that i have a, a second terminal what i can do is curl local post colon 8080 and as you can see that's my message hello from graph handler if you don't have curl use get if you don't have get then just use your web browser it's just easier for me to just type that there okay so now i have that going i know that how this is working what i want to be able to do is again create um that chart um, using some sample data so if you remember the way we create a chart and using the eCharge library is to be able to say something like this so let me get rid of this we say that we want to create a line and we want that to be chart that new um, charts not chart chart is from the package for the finance package so this is charts that new line and we create a new line and if I save this you should see that what it pulls in is chart from the go e charge library which is the one that we're using and then we can do um, something like a line that's set global for example options so once we do this there's just send some option well once we have a line we have to set the, set the x-axis data and the y-axis data is we will say line that render and we'll write it to this writer and so that's the reason why we created a web server is so we can have a writer where you can write this data out to instead of writing out to a file but we still need this data so what i can do is i'm going to do x y colon equals the get data function call but i haven't written it yet so function get data and it doesn't take anything and essentially it just returns x and y well x is going to be a slice of um, strings and that's the reason for that is because i want to simulate um, what we're going to be displaying if you remember we're going to have x-axis as the date which is a string value and y-axis is going to be our float 64 right the price value so we want to be able to see that so this is going to be slice of string and then slice of float float 64 okay and so how do we get some data well i want to get some random data so um, first of all, that means that I'm going to go back up here and then now I can create my random number generator, which is equals to rand that new and give us this source that I created just now. All right. So that should give me some nice random number. And so here, how many numbers I want? So let's say count colon equals to 356. So now that we have that, then we know that how we're going to need um, make a slice, right? So we know how many data points we want. We want or a chart is going to have so we can make a slice for just that and so this is going to be float 64 float 64 and this is going to be y okay and then now we can then start creating some data point so how should we create this data point i'm going to simulate that how we're going to be creating a year's worth of data, at least data going 30, 365 days worth of data starting from today going backwards. So that means that now is the time is time that now, right? That's the time now. And then I'm going to sit in a for a loop. So equals to zero, I less than count, I plus plus, come on, all right. And so if I sit in a loop, what should my time look like? Well, you saw how time um, behaves already. I can say time that add, and then I can say I want to add zero year, zero month, and just minus one day to mean the previous day. That's all this means, right? And um, what I can do is I'll do that at the end so that when I loop around, um, I'll have that data point to work with. So the first day is going to be today. Then I'm going to create data points for yesterday and the day before and so on as I keep going back as I go through my loop now what is x then well x of i if you think of it right I have just one place on my my slice x of i is going to be let's say time that format we use this already so format and I want this to look like a year a month and the date something like that that's all that's going to be for my um, x value and then y of i is going to equals to let's just call a random number generator and we're going to call float 64 and this is going to give us a value between 0 and 1 essentially but what i really want is a random number between let's say minus 300 or 250 to positive 250 random value multiplied by 600 is less than 300 
well, then it's going to be a negative value. And then if it's 300, well, it's going to be zero. And if it's more than 300, well, then it's going to be a positive value. So that's where we are. All right. So the only thing left for me to do now is after populating my data source is to do return X and Y. And so I don't have any errors. Well, let's see here. Um, da, 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 da. What is this? X non declare statement outside. Oh, all right. So I don't really need to declare that. Yep. All right. So now there we go. All right. So let's go. All right. What is it complaining about now? Non declare. Ah, function. Function. F B and C. All right. Save that. And then let's go here. And then let's clean up. Control C. Clean up. And then I'm going to be running example two. Ah, what is it? T that add date. I want add date, not add add date. Save that. And then we go back, clean up, and run. And it should be waiting there. And if I do this again, I should get a whole lot of stuff. Okay, good. So that means that I should go to my web browser and take a look at this. And so if I'm back here and I do this and I refresh, notice this is what it looks like. So this is what we've just plotted. But at least this demonstrate that if we can get the um, X values as strings represented date by like this, and our Y values are floats, then we can be able to display it. So now let's go back to our example and let's do exactly that. Let's close this and let's copy this and call it example three. So example three, and we should start moving a little bit faster now. I'm doing terrible on time. Okay, so we have this thing that can allow us to create a web server. And as I said, the problem is that um, here we have a function and that is our handler. But another way that we can create a handler for um, a web server is simply by using a value that implements the HTTP handler function. Now, if this doesn't make any sense to you, what it basically means is that you can say HTTP that handle, and you can simply say this, and we give it the same pattern, but now we give it a value that implements HTTP handler. And so I'll come down here and I'll say that, oh, we have a struct uh, type, uh, type call graph handler, and it's a struct and it has a parameter. And I'm going to start off by saying that all this parameter just do with one symbol and it's a string. Okay, keep it simple for now. And so this can be a function now, but rather this is a method. So graph handler method. And we by putting a receiver there, and this is supposed to be serve HTTP, right? So I've turned this into a method of this um, type. And so here we have to create a value and so i can do this and then i can see that all we're dealing with apple okay so notice um the change i've made um so why is it complaining cannot use literal graph handler as that da, da, da is an argument to type handle uh, see it does not implement the function serve http method well serve at uh, server let's type an error okay and so that's it that's the only change that I've made to the code that we we're running before. And now let's go run this as example three. So control C, clean up, and let's call this example three. And I run that, and then of course I'll go back to this and refresh. And of course it still works, right? But just so you understand what we've done is that we've now since we have implemented a type, we can pass in values in it that it can use. And what I didn't do is to actually show you that instead of using this, we can simply say gh that symbol, right? Because we're passing that in. And we can then, uh, yep, so we have that there. And now if we close this and rerun it, And refresh this you can see this is the lowercase apple that's because we're passing that in so this is a very simple change to what we were doing so let's call this example three 
and then now let's copy this and make an example four now in example four we're going to extend what we're doing as you can imagine <laughs> what we want to do now is since we're passing in this information into graph handler graph handler has everything it needs in order to get the stock information so why don't we just pass that here so we can pass the symbol that we want to look up information for so this is going to become now the symbol and it's going to be a string and then now we can get rid of some of this headache that we were doing here and just sort of come down here and do the same sort of thing right so we have a count already um we have oh let's just um da -da 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 -da. yeah we'll have to do a little bit of work here so let's cut this put it to the bottom here and then let's um get rid of this guy um we would like our we don't need um to format anything as currency um we still want to be able to get all our stocks eventually so i'll put this back in main i'll put this back in main and i'll still assign it to nothing for now all right and so let's go back to dealing with our get data so we pass this in it's going to return um the x and y value um so before it can get the count though it needs to go out prepare the call so let's get rid of this it needs to prepare the call to we don't need time now let's do, get rid of this because we have this now it needs to go out get the chart data and then come back with the count and then of course it can tell us how much how many data points we got so there's that for this stock we don't have to art hard code this value anymore we can just use symbol here we make the call to get chart information we get the count we could print that out if we want we will still leave that now we can make um slices to hold our data and then we can iterate over that bar information get the price and date and instead of printing it out on the screen what we'll do is instead put it in x and y the time that unix reformatted put it into date and so yep this is our date value and then this is our price so um what is this complaining about now cannot use time that that is format as string oh yeah the price is going to be um data is going to be a string why don't we finish with it can we already call format on it and then this is slice of float okay so what is from undefined i all right so we still need an i as we iterate through this so we're going to do um, i colon equals zero and then at the end of everything we do i plus plus run this and see so this is example four so no error messages um so if you go here refresh and there you go this is exactly what we expect Apple stock was just under $200, uh, specifically, um, you know, a year ago, it was $185. And then today, it's somewhere up over here. And we saw the last time how we could put lines in and so on. But it's somewhere here close to $300, if not $300. All right. So that allows us to get one chart information. Now, the only thing is to add some more, all the symbols that we could pass in the command line to, um, to, to a chart. Well, we know how to do that. So let's copy and we'll do this and we'll do um, exercise five. This is our last and final exercise. Remember, we have in all our symbols here. So why don't we just take those, pass those into our web server there. And once we have this in our web server, which we can have as symbols, well, you know what? I like the ticker instead. So tickers um, is a slice of string. And so I'll change this from symbols to ticker tickers and so we have that and we're not doing anything with it when we pass it in but there's nothing that's stopping us from passing it all the way down into our object here um, our graph handler so tickers is a slice of string and then um, what we need to do is this graph handler is instead of creating a new line for one stock is we have to do is create a page uh, 
We don't care about the index, but we want a symbol. So let's type SMB, for example, um, range is equal to range over GH that tickers, right? And if we can loop around that, what we can do then is keep creating a new symbol. We have put it in here. So let's think about what this means. Create a new chart. I don't care so much about the global option, but if we did, we can just put here um, the symbol name. And then instead of GH, we'll just do this, the symbol, and then we'll get the information, put it in the chart. And why is this complaining? Um, symbol, do, 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 oh, symbol, oh man. S Y S Y M B S Y M. I'm just messing this up. S Y M. All right. So we do that, and then the only thing we have to do is add this chart to our page. So page that add, and we say line, right? And then we render not the page. So we said page that render instead of line, and and that is it. That's the only change we need to do. What we did was we pass our tickers that we get from the command line into our web server. We have the web server create an object, a graph handler object, pass that in, and then our graph handler has that. When the HTTP as, um, the serve HTTP method is called, it simply creates a page, loop over, get all the chart information, historical information, add them to the page, and then render the page. That's it. And so let's go back here. And let's clean up and let's run exercise five. And let's run it. And if we go over here and we refresh, we can see Apple. Okay, we only pass one chart, one symbol. So let's do um, Apple, Google, MFST, um, INTC, AMD, um, CLDR, and then we run it. And then we go back here, we refresh. And so you can see we have Apple, we have Google. Oh, well, I, may, I messed up Google probably. Google is probably supposed to be G-O-O-G. -O so something like G-O-O-O-G, -O something like this. And then you refresh. And there we go, Google. And the reason I chose to put them on separate charts is because with something like Google being, you know, over a thousand dollars, if you try to plot it on the same chart with something with all these other ones like AMD, that's much lower value, it's just going to be a line all the way down to the bottom here. You're not going to really be able to see the trend, but you can do whatever you want. So that's it. Um, I hope you learned something. If you haven't hit the subscribe button and you're watching this channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you haven't hit like on the video yet, man, what are you waiting for? I'll show you something really cool and leave comments. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.